Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm sure by now you're wondering where are the videos supposed to be uploading once a week. Uh, we've had a little bit of trouble getting parts uh, from my brother's work to finish the car. So in the meantime, I want to show you the options that you have when you're trying to, I guess, maintain your stock uh, rear trailing arms on a Civic. Uh, particularly 92 to 95. I believe it, it'll work for any 92 to 01 or 92 to 2000 Civic with drum brakes. Um, you guys know I'm converting mine over to discs and I just want to show you what options you have to connect your uh, coilovers or struts, whatever you have on the back of the car into the all-wheel drive rear trailing arm. Uh, then hopefully this weekend, no promises, but hopefully this weekend we will finish the rear trailing arms and you can see here, ooh, there you go. I've actually got one of them done, but you guys will have to see that obviously, like I said, this weekend. Before we finish the rear trailing arms, I wanted to show everybody the options that we have on the back of the Civic when using the stock Civic RTAs. Uh, obviously there's not very many choices, but this is using stock lower control arm location. You see, uh, I don't even have it bolt uh, connected down there and the bushing uh, is fouling completely with the control arm. So your CV joint would likely fail uh, almost instantaneous as soon as you start moving the car. So there's, I guess I found two options. Uh, we'll go with the option that I'm not going with first. So hold on just a second and I'll bolt that up and show you. So the first option that I kind of toyed with was uh, pushing back the coil over and then turning it 90 degrees and attaching it with like a bolt welded to uh, a tube, kind of like this. Uh, so, you know, it would go in there, and this would connect similar to that. Uh, let me see if I can show this. Okay. So, just like that. Um, Issues you have here, obviously, is uh, since this is pushed back, you're going to have premature bushing failure. And, you know, there's people concerned about the bolt breaking, but if you're using the proper grade bolts, I think a uh, 3 8 bolt has a shear capacity of like 4,500 pounds. You're going to have about 700 pounds on it just sitting in the driveway. Um, when you apply, like, g-force is going around a turn I would think it would probably go upwards of 3,000 pounds plus or minus so I, th I think this would work I did actually draw a a better bracket and I will show that in a picture uh, right now now that bracket that I've I drew up it allows you to it uses this setup but it has like a, a C clip over the top of it so that if that bolt ever broke, your, well not this bolt, but the bolt in, going through, if it ever broke, the C-clip would at least catch it on the lower control arm and hold it, you know, until you, at least until you get home or something like that. So the next option, which I'm not really gonna show, uh, like put together, but it's putting your, one of the front forks on the back um, if you modify this fork to have like a, a very wide opening, it would, this would probably work, but, uh, I didn't want to have to order new bottoms for my coilovers and I would have had to lower it all the way, the coilover all the way to get it to work. Uh, you could maybe experiment with some like NPC forks, but like I said, that's got to be. Uh, much wider so I don't think it, it would work any, even using the NPC ones and now lastly 
um, the direction that most of you are going is buying uh, the lower control arms from Hub City Performance. Just you know, if you don't have the the capacity to manufacture your own, which most people don't, then that's a good option. I think they're around 350 bucks. Um, I did. I'm working on making my own for this project only. They will not be for sale because it takes a lot of. I make them out of steel for one. It takes a lot of steel and. It's a lot of work as well. <clears throat> so I drew this up in AutoCAD, uh, well, the plate, and then I drew up some spacers in AutoCAD as well. <clears throat> and how I've got it laid out right here, it's still rubbing the RTA. So I need to take, you see I got three layers, a quarter inch each. This outer one, it either needs to be cut uh, around this, uh, this guy here and moved to the other side so that I can move the uh, coil over over another quarter inch and then I'll have clearance. Or um, just take this whole piece out and add more spacers to, uh, to the other side on this side. So I would need to add two more spacers to this side and then uh, this remove this layer and then I would, I would move everything over a quarter of an inch and then it would bolt up fine. So that's kind of the, the options you have right now if you want to maintain or retain your stock uh, RTAs. Obviously, there's uh, other companies as well. Um, H1 has a bolt-on kit that would, you know, this is my bracket. It would replace this bracket, and I believe it. they use the, the stock hole locations for the, the spindle. So you don't have to do any like drilling other than that one hole, the three, the three inch hole that you have to put in to put your axle through the, the spindle or through the RTA. So that's you know that's a good option. They are uh, they were on sale, I believe, for Black Friday. So some of you guys probably picked those up. Um, you know, it's a really good option. They have four and five lug as well, so you could go that route, <clears throat> but if you've been following this channel, I'm going to be uh, DIYing all of the, the back of this whole car. So I obviously made my own. I am trying to sell a couple of these, which the people that want to buy them already know. And if I get them made, then, then they'll get those hopefully later this week. Uh, one thing I will note, this bolt here, I'm just going to uh, put a stud through it and weld it on the back side and then drill out these threads and just put a nut on this side for this particular bolt and all the other bolts will bolt to the RTA and then I'm going to weld this bracket to the RTA as well to hold everything in place. So there they are. Those are the options that I know of as of right now and those options are all uh, what I would call budget friendly options uh, using Obviously, I'm using CRV parts. Um, probably can use some of the old uh, wagon van parts. Um, but anyways, if you know any more options or better options, uh, cheap options for the DIY person, or just you know the Honda enthusiast, the general enthusiast that doesn't have a shit ton of money, uh, just comment in. Let us know. Um, <clears throat> we all are aware of some companies. S1 Hub City Performance. Uh, and there's uh, some new guys uh, showing their parts on the Performance All Wheel Drive group as of late. Um, so, you know, check those out. They're not as uh, affordable as the other two, but um, I'm thinking that, you know, the competition hopefully will drive those prices down further and further and get it to where people like me uh, don't have to build everything on their on their own to get all-wheel drive car going but you know it's kind of fun to build your own car uh, i'm having a great time doing it my brother-in-law he's having a great time uh, doing an all-wheel drive car too something we've never done uh, you can kind of see his uh, huge go-kart frame over there that he's always been working on so this the civic's kind of like a a giant go-kart for him and you know it, 
kind of that's what it is. But uh, but anyways, uh, if you like the video, like, uh, subscribe it, subscribe to me. Uh, if you don't like it, thumbs down. Uh, give me any kind of feedback. Uh, constructive criticism is always nice. Um, I don't know. That's it. Uh, like I said, hopefully I'll see you guys again this weekend. If not, next week or the week after. Uh, thanks.